So we're casual right side up is above the central axis of the mirror. Okay. So if you use a concave mirror of radius four, explain the equation of the diagram. As the distance you place at your bottom. Okay. So so I can take the approach with the so we're saying so a concave mirror is diverging or, or no, converging I mean which one yeah, converging right good so then you you just um, you can set up the the three different sections so the one that was um, so there it is real real so you want a real image so if it's real it's got to be so inside the focal length is virtual, and then real and upright. So they'll be upright either way, and you want it to be the same size. So is it's got to be outside two f. So let's see what it's actually asking. The, the distance you place the actual flowers. What does it mean? Explain. So, what distance would you want to put it at? Yeah. You know, you'd want to put it at um, greater than the radius. That's your answer. I think he wants a quantitative answer. Uh, what is the actual number? Yeah, that's right. What I mean, is that correct so far? Like with the. Yeah, so, what was your answer again? Um, that you would put it. You want to put it outside of two f. Outside of two f, and yeah. why is that? Well, just because it's the. So what we did. <laughs> yeah, so let's go through that. So let's think about the different uh, regions here. So we've got 2F, F, all right, so let's go through um, our chart. So what type of device would we be thinking about here on the left? So this is the so, lens. Uh, look, uh, converging. Yeah. So remember, we, this works for either a lens or a mirror. So on this side, we treat it as a converging device. And on this side, we treat it as diverging. So if we put the object outside twice the focal length, what were its characteristics? So it'll be real, upright, and the same size. Ah, I actually, we remember have to go back and review that. Do you have that chart in your notes someplace or memorized? You, you can use a cheat sheet, right? Yeah. So we can just find it in your notes. Oh, wait, does real go with inverted? IR, yeah, real goes with inverted. Yeah, what was our memory aid for that? IR. Infrared, infrared. right. Inverted always goes with real. We can use an infrared as our memory aid there. Okay. So how can it be real and still? They want it to be real, a real image with a bunch of flowers, but they want it to look upright. Ah, right. Okay, so let's go through that. So what's the other characteristic of this here? Would it be um, um, magnified insane. or shrunk? Um, oh, shrunk, because it's S. Oh, I thought the S was for same. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So that's right out the whole word, yeah. So it's <laughs> S for shrunk. All right, so let's fill out and make sure we have a table here. So how about this region? If we put the object for a converging device between the focal length and twice the focal length, what are its characteristics? Um, so it's magnified. Real and inverted. All right, and what if we put it inside the focal length? So then it's um, virtual, upright, and um, magnified. Okay. And what if we have a diverging device? What would be the characteristics of the image? Um, so it's the same thing. Which would be? Upright, virtual, and, uh, oh no, it's shrunk. Yeah, so all of these characteristics, each case is different in some way from the others. All right, I know you can just look this up in your cheat sheet, yeah. but do you remember what our memory aids are? How do we re remember that it goes real, real, virtual, virtual? Not all the still something to go 
He vied for voters. Okay, Ronald Reagan vied for voters, or whatever you like. Okay, so RRVV for virtual virtual. How do we remember that this is Trump and this is Trump? Yeah, so we can think that the S stands for on the sides and the M stands for in the middle. All right, and how do we know that these are inverted? Yeah, inverted always goes with real, infrared, and how do we know these are upright? Yeah, UV as a memory aid, ultraviolet. Okay, you just look it up in your, the safest thing on the table, you can see that yeah. your memory might play tricks, so you want to actually look at it. F is side S, okay, same. Okay, so here's our table. Now, um, let's think about what would happen if we put the object right exactly at twice the focal length for a converging device. So again, it could be either a lens or a mirror. If we have a converging lens or a mirror, what would happen if we put the object exactly at twice the focal length? Well, notice that that is right on the border between being shrunk and magnified. Oh, so that's the same? Yeah. Logically speaking, if you put it right at this position, it can't be shrunk or magnified because it's at the border between them. Well, what's, uh, is it possible to be neither shrunk nor magnified? Well, there's no paradox about being neither shrunk nor magnified. That just means the image is the same size as the object. Uh, I don't really have room to put that on my page here, but you might want to add that to your table, or it should be obvious basically from the logic again. When you're on the border between being shrunk and magnified, the image must be the same size as the object. Okay. Then why does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the border between being shrunk and magnified. But well, what's the border between being shrunk and magnified being the same size? as the object. Now, so it's certainly possible for the image to be the same size. That's what always happens when you look in a plane mirror, yeah. right? Uh, but it can even happen here with a curved mirror or a curved lens. Okay, um, so here's where we would be uh, at the same size. So if you're exactly at F, like, can you think of like you're in between real and virtual? That's a good point. Now, that would mean that the image is neither real nor virtual. But if you think about it, that's not possible. Those are the the cases. So you actually don't get an image if you put the object here. Oh. Now, um, in, in a way, that's a technicality because um, you could never have, if, if, if you had a, an object that was a point, and you could put that point exactly at the focal length, you wouldn't get an image. Now, any real object will be kind of spread a little bit before in front of the focal point, so there'll be still some image, but it might uh, be uh, very dim, basically. Um, notice that this is in the very re middle of the magnified region which means this is the point of infinite magnification. Oh, it's even more magnified. This is actually, in a sense, infinite magnification, which again kind of means no image. All right, basically, um, what we should say here is um, if, you, if you put the object right here, in a sense there's no image, what you actually get is you get an infinite image distance. The way it would come out in the equation is that you would get an infinite image distance, which kind of means no image. So the upshot is um, if you're right on F, then that means that you can't be virtual or real, but th those are the only two possibilities. So in a sense, there's no image at all. And the way that you would see that in your mathematics is that S prime, our image distance, would come out to be infinity. On the other hand, if you're at this point, that means you're neither shrunk nor magnified. Well, that's not paradoxical. That's totally possible. That just means that you're the same size. The image is the same size as the object. So if you're in between inverted and inverted, does that make you upright? Uh, well, no. It just means you're inverted. inverted. No, they don't cancel out. <laughs> yeah, they don't cancel out. Um, but again, you can see that here. How about here? Here we're on the border between inverted and upright. But uh -huh. well, that means you're neither inverted nor upright, and that is impossible. These are the only two possibilities. You have to be either inverted or upright. That's another way of proving that there really is no image if the object is directly at the focal point. So based on the logic of it here, we can see there really is no image if you put the object directly at the focal point because it would have to be an image that's neither inverted or upright. But that's impossible. And it would have to be an image that's neither real nor virtual. But there, uh, when you put the object here, it's between inverted and inverted. So it's just still inverted. It would just, it's just in the inverted region. Uh -huh. OK. Uh, let's see if that helps us here with the uh, problem. So um, let's see here. We have a concave mirror. And we need to have memorized, did you say that's converging or diverging? Yeah, we just have to memorize that's converging. OK. Um, and uh, then, uh, and remember again, when you're using this table, you don't want to focus on whether something is concave or convex, because that would be different for lenses and mirrors. So you just want to focus if it's on it's converging or diverging, because then the table works for both lenses and mirrors. Yeah. OK. So that's what you did. You saw it's converging. So where do we want to be in, the t in, this, in this chart? Well, what point do we want to put the object at? It says you want to create a real image, but 
Then so what, what, what region would that put us in? So the thing is, a real image would be anywhere past F. So, so since it's a real image, we know we're somewhere in this region. This is the region of real images. 